Hadith is a continuation of the prophetic tradition which starts with his saying, Allah is pure and he accepts only that which is pure. How our dua, our invocations are accepted. How to purify our deeds, our acts, our beliefs. How to be purified and accepted by Allah. This is the topic of this hadith that we will discuss. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إن الله تعالى طيب لا يقبل إلا طيبا وإن الله أمر المؤمنين بما أمر به المرسلين فقال يا أيها الرسل كلوا من الطيبات وعملوا صالحا إني بما تعملون بصير وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم ثم ذكر الرجل أشحث أغبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يقول يا رب يا رب ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغذي بالحرام فأنا يستجاب له This is one of the most important ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explaining the importance of acquiring our livelihood from lawful and legal means. At the beginning we mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the pure the one who is devoid of any deficiency. And he accepts only things which are pure in terms of belief, of actions, of sayings, and deeds. The people of paradise will have their blessed and purified life where there is no jealousy, no hatred, and no dislike. Then the Messenger وسلم, took the boat, a common link between the believers and the messengers. Both of them should be very aware about the livelihood, about the earnings that they have. It is one common command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has issued to both of them because the most catastrophic problem that a person falls in is when he puts in his stomach something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disallows or he purchases something from an unlawful or illegal means. This is one of the greatest things that destroys the moral code of a person in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A charity must be pure and clean in terms of the way the person earned that. So we cannot say that a person steals something and then he pays it in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our respected brothers and sisters, our righteous ancestors give us examples of how they were renouncing any doubt in their livelihood. It is reported from Yunus ibn Ubaidillah, he's one of the scholars of hadith. The man, one day, he sold a piece of silk for one of the African brothers. So, he asked him what is the price. Yunus said, it is 20. And then the adhan was announced. And the practice of our righteous ancestors is that when they listen Allahu Akbar, they immediately leave everything in their hands and they go. So he closed the shop and went to the mosque before concluding the deal. Later he came to the shop and finding that the piece of silk was sold to the African for 40. So he was asking his servant, why did you sell it for 40? I already concluded the deal with the person. To only pay 20, so he started running in the market, searching for the man to return the 20 back for him, because he just gave him a word. He found the man after a long pursuit, and at the end, he grabbed him and said, I already sold you the piece of silk for 20, and you paid 40. So take your 20, or you need to return the whole piece. The man said, it is a good business for me. I'm still having a lot of profit. So he grabbed him and said, I swear by Allah that I will never ever leave you until you take the 20 or you give me the piece of silk. And the man 
asked him, what's your name? And he said, I'm a slave of Allah. And he said, you tell me the name that your mother gave you at your birth. And he said, I am Yunus ibn Ubaidillah. The man looked to Yunus, hugged him. He is righteous. A person who purified himself from the inside and the outside. Abu Bakr is reported that he vomited what he has already eaten because he thought that it is brought from unlawful means. This is a message for our brothers and sisters working in unlawful means of livelihood. Secure your children. The best means of security is when you provide them with something that is halal. Allah will bless their lives. Allah will bless their tongues. Allah will bless their deeds and actions. This is a very important message for all the brothers and sisters working in liquor, working in any acts or deeds, and they do not perfect the work. You need to purify your actions. We need to purify our means of livelihood. Otherwise, person who doesn't earn his livelihood and earnings from legal means, his dua, his invocation is not accepted according to the hadith. Because the Messenger ﷺ gave a mention for a man raising his hands to the sky day and night to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this heaven. He is a man repeating his dua, insisting on Allah. Yet, Allah dismisses his supplications, does not accept his supplication. Although the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah hayyun kareemun yastahyi an yarfa'a abdahu yadayh ilayh fayaruddahuma sufra. Allah is ashamed to have the hands of his slave being raised for him in seek of invocation and supplication. And he returns them without acceptance. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept the dua or the invocations of people who do not purify their earnings. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas was a man whose supplications were actually accepted right away. And the Prophet ﷺ gave him glad news about it. He is one of the ten people given a promise to receive the Jannah while they are still alive. He asked the Prophet ﷺ one day, how should I have my invocations being accepted? And he said, أطب مطعمك تكم مستجاب الدعوة Purify your earnings and your invocations will be accepted. This is a sincere advice of the Prophet ﷺ. There is a close relationship when you dedicate yourself for Allah, when you purify yourself from outside and inside, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regards one of his devoted servants and slaves. Then, when you seek forgiveness, it is granted for you. When you are seeking Allah's help and support, Allah is helping and supporting you. When you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely do that for you. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, how a person should make the dua? There are some conditions that the Prophet ﷺ took to us about. On the top of them, that the person, when he is making dua, is certain that Allah will accept that from him. Having a yaqeen, certainty. Some of the brothers, we see them saying, Oh, may Allah forgive you, insha'Allah. No, the Prophet ﷺ prohibited us to do so. When you are making dua invocation, you need to be certain and determined that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely accepting yours. Number two, when you are making the dua, you are seeking and begging Allah with all the names and attributes that he has. You are making it as if Imam Ahmad said, do you know how I make dua? Is it just like a person 
falling from a ship or a boat in the ocean and he finds nobody to support him except Allah. When you are making dua, you are choosing and picking up the good and nice words, turning your face to the qibla, making the dua by praising Allah, sending prayers upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beware not to make the dua for harming Muslims. Not make dua in a way which is not accepted by Allah, like for example exaggerating in giving the details of the dua. For example, a person getting married and he is asking Allah to get married to a lady or to a sister whose beauty is like that and whose weight is like And he is giving a lot of details. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is called i'tida. This is aggression in the dua or in seeking Allah's help in the supplications. Also, there are a lot of things that the person needs to have. He needs actually to pick up the best times where he can make the dua, like for example, between Adhan and Iqama. Like for example, when a person is breaking his fast, when he is visiting the Kaaba, he's doing all of those things. These are some of the etiquettes of dua that the Prophet ﷺ has taught us. So, number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure. And He accepts only that which is pure. Purifying our livelihood is one of the causes of accepting our invocations. When we are making the invocations, we are certain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely accepts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower His mercy upon all of us and accept from all of us, all of the du'as that we do day and night. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, two of our brothers, I guess this, uh, brother Abu Bara and brother Ahmed, Jazakumullah khairan for joining us. This is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu when we listen to his ahadith, we need to reflect on them and to raise some of the questions and the comments which may benefit us, inshallah, and benefit our viewers of eliciting some of the legal rulings and some of the important points in our life, inshallah. Brother Abu Bara, do you have any comment or start with you any yeah, question? Yeah, a question actually. What if I made the pray conditions and Allah did not answer my prayer? This is one of the most important uh, frequent issues actually which happen for the ummah nowadays. Even some of the brothers today ask, I make dua day and night for the support of this ummah, this needy ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept. All of us are in that deteriorating aspect of deteriorating. A situation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept? No. We need to make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua, accepts them. But the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us three alternatives or choices that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes all the time when a person asks him dua. Number one, either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promptly answers the dua in achieving what that person asked for. And this is, the scholar said that this is the minimal or this is the lowest a great even of the amount of answer and all the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are so generous. And the second option is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delays it for another stressing situation which you really need it. The help and support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports you for this. And the third so, option... So even the, the situation is different from the situation that you ask in dua from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Exactly, yes. It is maybe you have a disease, one of your brothers or sisters, one of your sons have a great problem and you need actually Allah's help insistently in that situation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces the dua that he did not accept from the beginning at this situation. And the third option is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a great reward on the day of a judgment. That's why the believers, the true believers, will wish on that day that all of their supplications were not accepted by Allah because of the great reward that Allah will compensate them on the day of a judgment. And this is so great. So a person shouldn't feel disappointed or frustrated because this is one of the ways of the shaitan. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said in one of his ahadiths that the person insists saying, Ya Rabb, and he doesn't find a fruit of the dua, a result of his supplications, and then he gives up. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to accept his dua. And sometimes Allah likes the people to keep knocking on his door, to keep begging from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the ibadat. That's why a dua is an ibadah. Dua is an act of worship in itself. Because you show your state of poverty, your state of what you call 
being in need for the help and support of your Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to see that in his slaves. But Shaykh, is this situation from the slave who didn't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring to him something, is this action of the slave put him in the uh, position of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disagree or maybe not accepted him or yani yaghdab alayhi? This I think uh, Allah said in uh, Surah Al-Ghafir وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَخْرِينَ I think this verse talking exactly about what my brother Rahman said. Exactly, that because there are two categories of dua. Dua al-mas'ala, the supplication of need. Very important. Exactly, when a person is in a dire need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah accepts his dua. And another act of dua, which is an act of worship, which is referred in this ayah, is dua al-ibadah. When you are showing, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes his slaves to raise their hands and seek his help and seek his support all the time. Yes. That's why the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it an equivalent for the people who do not make dua for him, that they are mustakbirin. Mm -hmm. And I need to give the brothers also <laughs> the glad news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a lot of examples of how he accepted the dua of prophets and messengers, which is spread in the whole of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even when Iblis asked him to be waived, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let him to live forever in this life until the day of a judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Zakariya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of the noon, Jonah, when he was in the depths of the ocean. فَلَوْلَ أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ لَبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ When he said, لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. That's why the scholar said, there are secrets of happiness which are given in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions specific supplications for specific prophets and messengers and righteous throughout the Quran. So when a person is in need or is put in the same situation and he asks Allah through those words, Allah will accept him because when the Sahaba said to the Prophet ﷺ, commenting on the ayah of Jonah the Noon, when he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum nazalimeen, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, is it specifically and particular for him or it is for everybody? He said, Very No, grateful. it is for everybody because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Such mm. is the case of the believers. So the Muslims need actually to concentrate on how the sunnah approached dua, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expressed some words of dua which are concise and to the point, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are more direct in reaching your destination with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very small point. Take it from your talk, Mr. Sheikh Muhammad. Is it theirs or Allah can accept this believer, pray? What do you mean? I mean, if uh, there's someone and he, he's not believer, he's yeah. not believing God. Believing God with very, oh, not the right belief. Because Allah can accept his prayer if he said Allah or another ways. In prayer. If he pray, is Allah going to accept him? If there's any case, Allah can accept from him. Brother Abu al-Bara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the invocation of the unbelievers. Yes, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about that in the Quran. When they are in the midst of the oceans, wind is striking them right mm. and left, and they don't find any rescue. But on that specific point, they realize that there is no one who can save them except Allah. They express their dua in deep sincerity and in deep certainty that Allah is the one to accept it. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about that, فِي الْفُلْكِ وَجَرَيْنَ بِهِمْ بِرِيحٍ طَيِّبَةٍ وَفَرِحُوا بِهَا جَأَتْهَا رِيحٌ عَاصِفٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked in another ayah of the Qur'an that دعوا الله مخلصين له الدين لأن إن جئتنا من هذه لا يكوننا من الشاكرين They asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely in deep devotion and dedication for him and Allah accepted their dua and later on they associated others with Allah This, uh, this question, Shaykh, uh, from my brother leads me to ask you about something else يعني, uh, Does the sin maybe a parry or uh, maybe a reason for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not accept the question, even the kuf, as you said, you just mentioned, while our brothers as Muslims uh, committing sins and raising their hands, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is this a kind of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while committing sins and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does Allah accept subhanahu wa ta'ala? If they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sin, you know, the sin even is sinful. 
<laughs> even a sinful. And this is out of the bounty and generousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we need to concentrate that also the sins are barriers between a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> That's why they make a frontier. You cannot. This is a gap between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as we mentioned in the hadith, Allah is purified. And except the people who are purified. So the more purification that you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to your dua promptly. But when the unbelievers thought that it is Allah alone, and they returned back to yes. him in repentance, at that point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their supplications. Without Shaykh invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or supplicating Allah, after mentioning some names of the Muslim uh, respected people, as we said, awliya, who has some places in, I think in everywhere in the, in the world that, people went there to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinking that this place is a sacred place to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes this is one of the misconceived ideas about invocation because some of the people they exaggerate and they think that there are some living people and even dead persons mm -hmm. that they have the authority or they have the way to make their invocations accepted and they have a proof for that which is not solid and I need actually to discuss it. The hadith when Umar ibn al-Khattab actually was asking al-Abbas, they say that al-Abbas and he hold him and we, he said, we ask you throw the uncle of your prophet. It is proven that the, uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab in that situation, he said, we ask you Abbas to make dua for us. He asked Abbas to make the dua. Not asking Allah exactly. So it is permissible that the person asks another person to make dua for him. And this is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ when he asked Umar ibn al-Khattab himself to do so. But to ask somebody to intermediary between you and Allah, this is one of the means of shirk, associating others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this is direct, and this is one of the best blessings of Islam, hmm. when a person is actually invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, without any barrier, without any intermediary. There is no barrier between a slave and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unfortunately, hmm. subhanAllah, we need to have more discussions about this hadith and about the dua, but we had run out of time, and we ask hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept the dua of this ummah, Amen. to save this ummah, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify the whole entities of this nation, the nation Amen. of Muhammad sallallahu and to bless it and to shower his mercy upon all of the Muslims everywhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.